Uh, I've just spent some time getting my breath back. And it may take me some time. My heart is beating so fast. Oh. I gotta get to the other side of this. Oh. I gotta feel my way through. This is for the woman who may see this years from now. Oh. It's really for the people, not even just the woman, it's the people. Oh. to come alive in a very dark world. Ooh. See, that this is why all of us who hunger to be free, like unhindered from everybody else's ideas. heart is beating so fast. <sighs> Feels like the more... <sighs> oh, shucks. Hmm. Hmm. Got to move it through, move it through, move it through. I've been moving my body so much for months. Priming, priming, priming. I have radically shifted my diet and watched what happens. Oh. Pardon me, please. I want to speak. It's just, I, I felt like I needed to come. Then not say, no, don't do this, Naima, because you're not completely settled, Naima. Naima, don't do this, Naima. No, don't go on video because you don't, you don't, you don't know what you might say. You don't know. No, Naima, just wait, just wait. Oh, God. See, this energy, this, this fullness, this power, this breath, this vastness, this yes. 
Mm. What it takes to come into and move through so that this doesn't stop us. So that this doesn't be the reason why you pause, why you hide, why you run, why you overeat, why you distract. Why, see? You can stay connected to what's pure. Stay connected to the bottom. Stay connected to the source. See? I'm so sorry. It's so hard. To come alive, to come alive in a dark world, to be on. So it just opened up for me in a large way with all the largenesses that have been opening up inside of me again. How much I've quieted the vastness that I am, the vastness that you are, the vastness. when you don't measure yourself. The electricity in your touch, the electricity in your thoughts, the electricity, you know, how you are when you're born. Thank you, God, thank you. I feel like I've gotten to the other side of this here right now. <sighs> wow. Thank you. See? Move through. You got to move through. Otherwise, you get locked and trapped in. And you lock in there. And that's when a, a certain kind of pain that happens when you're locked inside of fear and chaos and resistance. You got to move through it. I'm going to speak I. When I speak I, I'm speaking for every single person who gets what I'm getting. Okay? When I say I, I'm speaking for every single person who gets what I'm speaking. See, before all the gunk gets in here, see, before all the gunk comes over who you really are, before mommy and daddy, before society, before, right, there's an unmeasured self, right? You just, for example, I'm very affectionate naturally. I'm very like touch and lean into and come with and be with and and along the way I had a former client say to me, Naima, your touch is powerful. I hope you're not using that to manipulate people. I remember being so excited. I had moved to Houston and I love fashion. And I put together this fashion marketing company. And I wanted to help market up and coming brands. And I had, man, I hit the ground hard. I would go into boutiques and into jewelry stores. And man, I was a networking queen everywhere to get people to sponsor, to get people to come be vendors and 
gosh, I was all over the place. This was before I was even on Facebook. That's how long this ago this was. And I just remember being so excited. I had like, I don't know, 15 vendors. Keep in mind, I moved to Houston knowing nobody. I built it all on hustle. Just on, on the street, in the car, going to that business. I would go to a plaza and just hit every fashion business in the plaza. Then I'd go to another plaza and walk into all the businesses. I would look in the magazines, the newspapers. I would call. I would go to networking events and tell people what I was doing. Hey, you want to come? I contacted Paige Parks, which is a major fashion uh, uh, modeling agency in Houston. They ended up sponsoring. Contacted Audi. They let us have one of our events there, the Audi car dealership. Went to another event space. They let us have it. And I started doing more and more and more. But for this first one, I remember being so excited. This, this is my first time out on my own as an adult. I'm in a city. I don't know anybody. I'm just on. Excited. Even when I think about it now, it's like, wow. And I remember I was in a meeting. I had gathered volunteers. Man, I was on, excited. Gather volunteers. I'm doing this fashion show, this fashion event. And I remember being on a group team meeting on a call. And I, I remember being so, you ever be like so excited, you feel like you're about to burst? <laughs> you just so, right? You just so excited, you feel like you're about to burst. And I was so excited. I was just, oh my God. It's like all of my purity, my heart, everything. And this woman who was on the team said to me, I'm like, I ah! on the call telling everybody. She says to me, what's up with you? Are you on Ritalin? Now, I didn't even know what Ritalin was at the time, but her tone said to me that my way of being, something about it was not okay. Then I came to find out that Ritalin was for people who were uh, like with anxiety and stuff like this. When the truth was, I was so on. I was so excited. The part of me that was just like sexually like curious and right as a fucking energetic being in a body. What? A high velocity, fast, energetic being in a body. Just like curious, just like when I would, if I was in the company of a man who, who was just like open and was okay with me being, you know, the way I would just like activate and all this that would come up and out. And when I just watched myself cut myself off because ouch, that hurts. You don't riddle it, ouch, that hurt. I don't know what that is, but that hurt. The way that I would naturally, we could be in line at the grocery store. We could be in line, we could be at Starbucks. We could be anywhere. I remember one time I was married and my husband and I went to Target and we were holding hands walking into Target and a girlfriend of mine was walking out of Target. I'm like 22 at the time. Girlfriend of mine is walking out of Target. A girlfriend who I love. She walks out of Target. I'm so excited to see her. And I literally jump up off the ground. I'm like, hey girl, how you doing? And she like, that was, like, you're my friend. What's going on here? Why are you acting like this? And just so many instances in my life where being, I'm gonna use the word Naomi used in the comment section of the video I did last week about being too big for any man. She said, to be an exuberant woman is an offense. To be an exuberant, you look suspicious. Research patriarchy, research the way uh, society that we've all been programmed to exist as good. The way we've been societally programmed to exist 
as whatever makes you lovable, acceptable, good enough, good enough human person, mother. Okay. I'm not just going to assume that you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And that you tap into your own experience to get what I'm talking about here. How many of us have been exuberant kids? exuberant kids. My mother said, when I was a child, when I would be around a bunch of kids, I easily stood out. Bright child, right? And then people start saying things to you along the way. You're not even thinking about it. You, because you just being who you are. And it's, you on Ritalin? Why are you acting like that? I hope you're not manipulating clients with your touch. Oh, so let me stop touching people so much. Let me stop touching people so much. Stop, stop, like stop, stop, stop. So it's like, okay, stop being so expressive. Stop being so exuberant. Stop being so affectionate. Stop saying things without manip real manipulation where I got to sit and I'm measured and then I apply strategy to my words to convey something else versus, versus speaking purely. Okay. So then what happens? Okay. Eight, at eight, they say this. Okay. You can cut yourself off a little a part of yourself off, your full self. Ooh, they start saying all of this when you get into middle school. So then you cut yourself down a little bit more. Then your daddy calls you a hoe and calls you fast. You get into your puberty, you're a 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old girl, your hormones, puberty kicks in, you explore, you like, you're curious about your body. You're a being in a body and you, and you, you don't even know what's going on. You just know that you 15 and your daddy say, oh, you fast. Oh, you a hoe. You got hoeish behavior. And you don't know what exactly he's talking about, but he sees something and you want daddy's love and you kind of, you cut that down a little bit more. See, that's an, you're accumulating, cutting yourself off. Okay. Then you get to 21. You start dating seriously, right? Men say stuff. You start noticing, oh, when you're excited like this, I used to date a guy because I'm this, listen, see, whoo. I was living in Miami. We went out somewhere. No, we were in Fort Lauderdale. And you know that area. Anyway, we were in Fort Lauderdale, like this hip happening spot, a little street where all the clubs and stuff are. And we went to a restaurant. And I was just in this excited ass, wonderful mood. And we went to this uh, Mexican <clears throat> restaurant. It was like a, but it was like fast food Mexican. It wasn't like serious Mexican food, right? And we're ordering and I'm like chopping it up with the cashier excitedly. And like when we sat down to eat, he chastised me about it. About like, why are you being so like talkative and like, you know what I'm saying? And like you start accumulating these chips on who you actually are. Girls don't like you in middle school. You stand out too much. You get into college and it's like awkward. Girls are like, right? Oh God. I remember when um my roommate, I had a dorm in college at San Jose State, and my roommate was in a what do you sorority? Sorority. And she invited me into the sorority and she told me how it works and everything. And I remember thinking to myself, people sign up for this shit? Really? Like it just blew my mind that people sign up to go through, when she described to me the indoctrination involved and the, the, like, the level of drastic cutting yourself off from yourself to fit into this. I remember being like, are you kidding me? I was like 20, 21 at the time. Is this really, is this real? I remember, so, my bachelor's degree is in public relations, which is the journalism department at San Jose State. And there's PRSA, which is Public Relations Society of America, which is like for 
the adults. And then for youth, like college kids, there's PRSSA, which is Public Relations Student Society of America. And what happens is they groom you inside of PRSSA to prepare you to come out into the real world and get a good job at a public relations or other marketing agency. And I remember, and what happens is when you're in like your final year, your senior year, um, PRSSA, they have relationships with all the major PR marketing and like journalism media firms in town, all the big ones that are desirable, that have good jobs coming out of college. They are in relationship with them and they start hosting uh, mock interviews and like preparing you to go out, right? Preparing you to go out into the world and be like this. So you fit and get the job and get into the system real good. And I remember there were like, I don't know, maybe 80 students one night, they brought in hiring managers from these local PR agencies where all the good jobs are, if you want to get a good job, to come do these mock interviews. And a, 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 a friend of mine, we were had classes together, and like I knew this girl. Vibrant white girl. She was like me in many ways. Vibrant, articulate, smart, fast young, she's like 23 years old. We are like young and fat, you know what I mean? Fast meaning like we're, we're, we we think fast, we're smart, we're agile, we right? like how young people are, right? And we would laugh and we were exuberant and like we'd be in class, we were the ones who were engaged in class, answering questions, engaging, creating dialogue, called on often, reading out loud, getting our homework done quick, getting good grades. That's who she and I were, right? So she also shows up to this night where PRSSA is hosting uh, this mock interview with these hiring managers at these major desirable PR firms in town. And this guy in a suit, white guy in a suit, comes up on the stage and, you know, talks to all these young people about his agency and what they do and what it's like to work there and all the things, right? And he invites somebody out of the audience to interview to come up on the stage in front of all these students and staff to do a mock interview with him. My friend goes up, she volunteers up onto the stage. Of course she would, she's amazing. She volunteers to go up onto the stage and do this interview with this man. Now, keep in mind, I told you she's, she's exuberant, she's vivacious, she's expressive, she's smart, she's quick-witted. You know what I mean? A fresh, wonderful, amazing young thing, right? He, she comes onto the stage, they are, uh, you know, they get all sit down face to face. We're all watching. They get all prepared. And then the interview starts. And when I tell you, see, chip away, you chip away, you chip away, you chip away. There's another way. I watch this vivacious, energetic being turn into a closed, measured, uncertain, And then him come and tell her everything she did wrong and how she needs to alter herself like this to get the job. <clears throat> now, one could argue and say, well, Naima, that's the real world and you need to learn how to interview and um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and he's, he's, uh, giving her critique, constructive criticism and this is how it goes. And this, okay. Yes, good. It is. If you're going to choose that system, if you're going to work in corporate, by the way, I ended up running into her when I was like 26, just like three years later in the bathroom at a nightclub in San Francisco she was with her boss, okay? We were in the bathroom. We had all been drinking. Uh, and her boss was a hiring manager and tried to hire me in the bathroom because she was like, oh my, you know, we ran into each other like, oh my God, how are you? La, la, at the bathroom, in the bathroom. And they're, they've been, we've all been drinking, right? It was a really fun night. And 
she's like trying to hire me right there. And I'm like, no, the answer is no. Because I watched how she cut herself down after watching what happens in the sorority, after all the times that, and after every time after that, that to create, okay, why you feel stuck, why you feel like you should be further along, why you feel like you have blocks, why you feel like you're on the wrong timeline or you should be further ahead, why you do your best to make peace with what is, although deep down, you know there's more for you. Much, much, much more. Why you do, been doing transformational, I've been working on this for 10 years. I've been working on this for 20 years. And yet, the vast, power, vast woman that you know that you are something. She just, she's not really out here like that. See? So I'm going to look at these comments. I have been playing small deliberately for the last five years. I've been playing small. Regardless of what it looks like, no matter no matter how much it looks like I'm powerful, and I am, but no matter how much it looks like I've been playing a big game, no matter how successful I have appeared, I have been playing small. I said here, and I've said here many times, that in 2017, when I was at the peak of my career, I was living in Paris. I, 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 the level of material success that I had created, which is exactly what I wanted and that I had worked for up until that time, okay? I was living in Paris. I was taking French lessons. I was doing 50K plus 100K months like that. I was giving money away. I was traveling all over Europe, back to the United States. I was in $30,000, $50,000 masterminds. Money was easy, easy, easy. And actually money is easy when you're in your power authentically. And I put together this amazing event in London with the helps of Eugenia. Shout out to Eugenia if you end up seeing this video. I love you. Thank you so much for that memory that will always have just a lovely stain on my heart. Thank you so much. That could not have happened without you. And as I was assessing what's next, I was working with wonderful clients. I had a small virtual team that was helping me make it all happen. I would go down to shop and not even look at price tags. Just the ease. And I would look at what's next, you know, the next level of success. Really look at it closely. I got terrified. I got so like, oh my God. I remember like I could see the speed. I could see how much faster and like, like heaven. Like re when I say heaven, I mean like your being as walking heaven. And things just got so fast in my body and it was so vast. I remember like one time I was in my apartment in Paris and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I left the apartment to like dispel some of the energy. And I remember I sat on, stood on the corner and I was like, I remember this so vividly. I was like, I have to calm this down. I have to calm this down. And I went to a bar and drank like five glasses of champagne. That's my niece in the background, excuse me. Just to calm down this, what I had, this portal that I had like, oh my God, right? There was that. And then it was also, 
And I just talked about this in Visibility 2023 this morning that when you are going to whatever is next for you, the unconscious is going to get loud. Like everything that is subtle inside of you that is yet to be resolved is going to get Ah, it's going to come a lot like that. And this is what we start calling resistance force. This is what we start calling chaos. This is what we start calling the devil. This is what we start calling the enemy. What we start calling, you know, dark entities. And all. It's our unconscious selves. We are vast. I completely understand why we run from ourselves, why most humans run from themselves for their entire lives why we hide behind work, why we hide behind whatever we can. Why Carl Jung said a human being facing itself, one of its most terrifying experiences, and it will do anything to run. It will do anything to not face itself. What I also know and why I'm here today, ooh, come on. <laughs> is that you can get to the other side. It's horrible in the process, but you can get to the other side. You just have to have somebody in your life, which I did not have in 2017. Yes, I had amazing multiple seven figure coaches on speed dial. Yes, I had girlfriends who I would hop on a plane and go do something in um, London with her. Hey, where are you? I'm going to be in Paris next week. Oh, good. Let's go do brunch. Yes, I had that. Yes, I had, you know, somebody, my mother, right? Yes, I had all these things. But this power that I saw, clearly, you know when you cannot go talk to somebody about this thing. You know when the capacity is not there. And plus, there were so many instances in the years leading up to that where <clears throat> when I would want to go talk to somebody about something because I needed to get it out. I needed to talk to it. It always, it's like it went through them. It's like they didn't even capture it. They couldn't even be with it. When I say we are powerful beyond measure, I mean it. You cannot measure it. Your creative ability and the quick, the, the speed of, it's not measured. It's not measured. It's not like, here's my strategy. <laughs> here's my strategy to seven figures. I mean, yes, you can employ a strategy, but when you get to the other side, you will realize how much of that strategy didn't work and how much you intuition was required, how much trusting the process was required. So I'm here today, one, because I'm moving through this. I'm not getting trapped anymore. I'm done playing small. And then also, I like to talk a bit about this part right here, about the darkness of living in light. The darkness of living in light. Thank you very much. The darkness. So, the feminine has been demonized, period, point blank. The, de the, the, the feminine has been demonized, meaning anything that can't be measured is going to be demonized. Intuition, softness, kindness, compassion. You can't measure any of these. Um, sensitivity, relaxation, uh, eroticism, um, uh, uh, all the feminine elements, which is why <clears throat> I'm heavily recommend. Y'all like my, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, pardon the wrinkle. I, I'm recommending this book. So in here, it talks about the ways that the patriarchy, and even in a book called Sacred Prostitute, which is somewhere around here, here it is. <clears throat> I have like, Lord knows how many books right here in front of me. <laughs> so maybe you can go back and take a screenshot of that if you want the books. But it talks about, and in any book, I mean, any woman who's writing about this, man too, will tell you how um, all of the feminine erotic qualities that 
always are. It, it's here. It's, you don't, you can't kill it away. It's always here. We just got to disconnect it, disconnect you from it so that you become dependent on the systems that are given to you. So I'm not going to get too deep off into that. I want to stay more in a flow state up here versus the mental element. Uh, so knowing that this is why when a woman, when you come on, which is why I say the darkness of living in light, okay, coming alive in a dark world, coming alive in a dark world, coming alive in a dark world, coming alive, letting yourself touch, letting yourself smile too long, letting yourself hug strangers, letting yourself laugh loudly, letting yourself say yes to stuff that don't make sense, letting yourself lean in, letting yourself follow intuition quickly versus thinking three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, 10 times about it. Like, See that right there, that life, that flow, like trusting what Nicole calls the orgasm that perpetually flows through life. You could call it the eroticism, life force that constantly flows. The dominant world and patriarchy is disinterested in you living from that place. But I'm telling you as a woman who, listen, this is my life's work. This is who I be, this through and through, through and through. This is where the excitement for you, the, oh, you, never mind everybody else, you, 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 okay, you. Hey, Athena. Oh, I'm sorry, not Athena. Yes, Athena, that's you, I think. You, 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 your orgasm awake, your fullness alive. See, they're going to be suspicious of you. I want y'all to, I, this is, I'm also doing this for the record. Yes, to lay this down. Listen. The bullets are coming. The energetic vitriol, there's a very specific vitriol reserved for a turned on woman, especially a black one. The bullets are coming. I want y'all to know they're going to be talking about me. All the ugly. And it's coming for you too if you're choosing to come out. I'm telling you, girl, the orgasm is here. This is what I'm relying on. So I'm living as. You know why? I'm about to start touching people again. Yep. I'm about to start having conversations. I'm about to start being totally irrational. Okay. Totally irrational. See right there. Totally irrational. What I'm saying is I'm relying. Hold on my battery low. Hold on. Oh God, how am I going to, how the hell am I going to do this? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I'm excited to create. Jesus. Pardon me, y'all. What's going on here? Am I? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hold on. There we go. So the pain for me, the pain for me, I'm going to come to these comments, I promise. The pain for me in being small, physical pain, who can relate? Physical pain, um, really keeping myself withdrawn from people, regardless of what it looks like to you. To you, I look like an extrovert. I look like a whatever I look like to you. I have very much been keeping myself away from people because I don't want, can I just be who I am without you? Looking at me with suspicion. How about this? Yes, I'm a witch. Let me be clear about this. You know what a witch is? <laughs> to a, but any woman who is connected to what is. When you are connected to your intuition, you're a witch. They got us so scared of ourselves. Oh, he's a sorcerer. 
Well, God damn it, y'all love to talk about Jesus. Jesus turned water into wine. What is that? I'm not, I'm not interested in it, dude. I'm interested in the orgasm. I'm interested in creating a 2023. You, I'm here because I am ready for free. I'm a free woman. I always have been. I put myself in jail. I put myself in jail for good reason. How many of you have put yourself in jail? Put jail in the comments. Jail in the comments if you put yourself in jail. Because what your mom said. Because what society said. Because what your ex-husband said. Because what that dude said. Because what your boyfriend in the seventh grade said. Because of what your daddy said. I'm ready for free. I'm ready to be so, oh my God, the memories I have. When I let myself. And the pain of engaging in projects that you know are too small for you, but you do it because the project you really want to do, you don't have the power for, you scared to be in the power for, you don't have the energy for because you leak in your power all over the place with fear-based thoughts. By the way, I have a video that I did this morning. It's going to be uploaded about the six ways that you leak your power, the power you need to create an absolutely marvelously magnificent 2023 and beyond. Let me go look at these comments. So wait, hold on top chat. Oh God, is there a way I can go back to it? Hey Eva, wait a minute, how do I see y'all comments? Can I scroll like I see the one Eva just did? Live chat. Oh, here we go. Yay. Hi, Athena. Yes. And live with what you were truly. Heard. Yes. So what are you referring to, Athena? I'm curious. When you say you were so aligned and lit with what you were truly passionate about, what are you referring to? I'm curious. Yes. Thank you, Athena. Eva. Hey, Eva. I remember that name. Have we met? I remember a white woman told me her mixed daughter was better than me because she is mixed with black and white. I was like eight years old and, and oh, old. Oh, I was an outgoing child, but that stuck with me. How did that put you in jail? How did you put, what did that do to your belief in yourself or life with that? See, these, these different things in time to come home. Eva said, I was always told I do too much in middle school. See, see, oh gosh, see. I'm telling you, in sixth grade, middle school is so tough. <sighs> middle school is so tough. Athena said, I've had such similar experiences to you. Thank you for speaking for this. Others judge, criticize, cut chips at us, and then without even realizing it, we do this to ourselves. That, that. Eva said, I've been playing small for almost 10 years. You see? You are not alone, honey. Moving through this, moving through this, playing small, withdrawing from people. I put more orgasmic power in jail. <sighs> jail. Who else? So only Eva said jail. Um, so, so many times over the years, this, like if you go look at the beginning of this video, like, I don't know, maybe the first 10 minutes, that right there, like I've done a lot of that privately this year, a lot. And in the past, I would get locked right there. So I want you to see that. Like if you feel called to go look at it, obviously. But to see like, like the heart starts going and everything feels like a, like it can feel like a no, depending on what it feels like to you. It can feel like this is dangerous. This is no, this is a bad idea. And what happens is you fear the darts that are gonna come. <laughs> like the ones that caused you to go in jail to begin with, okay? You on Ritalin? What are you, a witch? What are you manipulating? You fast? Whatever, whatever yours are. And I'm here for me to move through this energetically so I'm not locked by this. I am ready to get to traveling again. I am like, I'm ready for like really creative sex, like a whole nother level of sex. I'm ready to 
coexist with other powerful women, where we let each other see each other. I was telling a women in visibility 2023 this morning, we are afraid of being seen at our deepest evil light levels. You're afraid of people seeing how dark you are. You're afraid of people seeing how deep and vast your heart is. You're afraid of people seeing your tenderness, your vulnerability, your innocence, your sweetness. We're afraid of being seen in that, taking advantage of that, because of, of, many of us have. I most certainly have, okay? We're so afraid of being played, of being hurt, of being traumatized. Even said, I am open. Come on, come on. And see, what happens is, Nicole, by the way, Nicole Daydon, who's the founder of One Taste, I appreciated when she said this. She said, she talked about, and I'm paraphrasing, okay, or I'm giving my interpretation of it, of the value of being played, okay? And I'm not, I don't want to get too like, y'all know I go deep into, and I'm not trying to do that in this particular video, but anywhere that you can get played, you actually wanted to get played there so you could clean it up, you see? Because coming into power consciously is so hard sometimes. We don't want to come straight at it. Sometimes we want to, we like being in this like, I don't know, I'm, you know, kind of like, oh, victim. And letting some predator come and take us so then we can be mad at the predator and find, you know, blame. Ah, and then finally come back around and realize, oh my God, I'm the one who allowed that all along. I'm the one who said yes to the narcissist. The narcissist's behavior can only work if I agree. You know, I'm an adult. You know what I mean? That person can, they cannot take advantage of me. They can only do it if I agree. And then you start to realize you had the power all along and you offloaded it because we love to offload our power because it's scary and it's hard being a powerful woman. It's difficult, okay? And so... It is so time for us to lay down with each other. Like it's so time for us to be erotic in the presence of one another. It's so time for us to be hugging each other completely. None of that like with the butt out, like what they call it, church hugs. None of this like scared to really hold eye contact with the man, you know, with a woman. Like none of it, like any of like all the things, all the things that keep our power in jail. Listen, because the, here's why. The power, the energy, and this is why I did the video that's gonna be uploaded. This is why I told one of the women in Visibility 2023 is that the energy that you need, when women be like, I don't know if I'll be able to keep up if I start on this path. Um, I don't have the energy. Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I wake up tired. How many of you have either said that or you know people say, I wake up tired. What? Can you imagine? I wake up your energy is in jail. <laughs> your energy is in the jail that you have created. And then, so in order for you to create, oh my God, please, please, can we travel together? The energy you need to create whatever it is that you're hungry to create. If you're ready to call in a magical man, if you're ready to call in girlfriends who see you, see the core of you and still love you, but you first see that in yourself. If you're ready to, be affectionate again, tell the truth again, connect with human beings again. Listen, because the war that is here, you, it's very clear what side you're going to be on. Come on. And you have it in you. You have it. You always did. You just put yourself in jail for very valid reasons. And I get it if you want to stay in jail, honey. I absolutely get it. Because listen, clearly, I told you I've been playing small for the last five years. So, <laughs> Right? I stayed in, oh, I'm going to stay in jail. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do this stuff, but I'm still going to stay in jail. Next year, yeah, I'm still going to stay in jail. You might be there and that's okay. That's fine. However, however, if you would like to be mentored by me, if you have a big mission that you need support in bringing forward, if you are ready for a level of erotic visibility, if you're ready to be in your body like never before, oh my God, and doing work with your body, okay? Getting active in your body. Oh my God, yes. Come on. Oh, 
if you're ready to be a woman, a woman, a woman who's on and actually being with a man who wants an erotic, full woman, where you no longer feel like you have to be small for a man, where you're no longer like appeasing men just to be in the company of one, to where you start to turn on men who want to be turned on. Men who are looking for powerful women versus women who play games and do all this childish girl shit. Oh, God. Being vulnerable, being tender again, being sensitive and approving of that sensitivity. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. <sighs> Thank you for being true with you. Oh God. Thank you for eroticism, for this body, for being in this body, for being one with, for breath. Thank you. <sighs> I'm getting ready to go. I'm just going to look at this all messages. Okay. Oh, I think we need to claim our power back from all the places. Yes. Athena, you want to come work with me? Let me say this. Thank you, Athena, for triggering this. I'm looking for people to be on my team. I'm looking for people to be on my team all around the world. I'm ready to start meeting in person. I am, and when I, I like, I'm ready to go like live in Australia for three months. Live in, I will only live in London dur during the summer months, by the way. I, I, I abhor London's weather. So be in London for 90 days, be in Houston for 90 days, be in Paris for that. Like I'm ready for us to start meeting in person and doing this work that Athena just talked about, that I've been talking about together for us to start, like a truly powerful, I'm not interested in all these, the stuff that it has a place for the woman who's at that level. I'm talking about full power here. I'm talking about full power. I'm talking about your whole pussy in the room, wet, lit up, open. I'm talking about your whole heart in the room, lit up, open. And that you doing whatever work is necessary in the room and being held in that way to open up in that way. And that's why I say 90 days so that there's recurring meetings. It's not just one. Recurring meetings. This doesn't happen like, this doesn't happen in a nice little women's retreat in Bali. You know what I mean? There could be some activation. There could be some beginning. But we're talking about recurring Okay, where there's a burning off, where you have space, where there's a nurturing, where there's a cultivation, where there's a blossoming. And that doesn't happen over a nice three-day event or on a wet weekend retreat or, you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for many things. Listen, so be in touch with me if you'd like to have a conversation. There's a variety of conversations to be had. You being mentored, you being on the team, you being a protege Email. My email will be beneath this video. Okay. Help at NaimaSingletary.com. And then I want to look at the last thing. I think you're welcome, Eva. Hell yeah. I want to come to Australia. I'm coming to Australia. Houston has very much been on my radar. Australia has been like in the back of my radar, just for the record, just to let y'all know. Okay. London is there. Like it's just the weather that I have a problem with in London. I used to date a guy in London and I... That weather we was living in, I said, y'all can have that shit. <laughs> Athena said, I'm ready to call in a magical man and my own magic. The men need us so much. Some of them know, most of us don't. They need us so much. And when we are being true in our power and our bodies and we're vulnerable, right? While in our power, not coming from a... Right, because I, I know that there's still the vestige and a lot of us seeking to be saved by a man or somebody. And I totally get that. I've seen that in myself. So we're not going to blame that. Okay. We just look at it with gentle confrontation. That's what we do. We look at it with gentle confrontation. 
Okay. You know, maybe we don't like conversation, right? Just like gently look at it. Like I, there's a part of me that does want to be safe because my experience is that when I'm vulnerable with a man, okay, and I, I, I'm, I'm excited to be this more. It's vulnerable with a man from a heart in your power where you're not hoping he saves you or says something that makes you feel right, but you're truly in your power with it. That man humbles himself or he gets out the way. It's just natural. It's just natural. He meets you in it or he gets out the way. So I'm, I'm just moving through this stuff, ladies. We got, we got to move through it and you move through it. You can do it. Do whatever you feel called to do. Like I feel called to do this. And I feel called to being in the room with women who are very clear, right? This video is going to be repurposed. Listen, <laughs> okay. So there's many things. There's many, many things. Magical man, yes. It hurts more to stay tight and small. It does. It does. Athena said, I just bought a property that might just be perfect fit to do this sacred work. Yes. And I say, is it might fit or do you know that it fits? This is the power and clarity of language and thought and intuition it's time for us to be in. Trusting yourself enough to rely on the orgasm that is always here to instruct your next moves. Okay, so, and I talked about this this morning in Visibility 2023, clear language, clear language, clear language. See, and it's because we don't trust that we oftentimes say, well, we'll try, maybe, we'll see, I hope so, right? We're afraid to trust that incontrovertible, infinite flow of the erotic, of life force energy that just flows all the time. Come on, it's time. Don't you want, I do, easy $100,000 months again, or for the first time, if you never have. Easy creation of money, easy creation, easy connection with men, easy connection, like easily even having things slide off of you that the venom that will inevitably be thrown your way. This is what I want for you. This is what's up for me. Being able to be with the vitriolic bullets that are inevitable, being able to be with the ugly that will inevitably, because remember, coming alive in a very dark world. See, coming alive in a, how dare you? Right. The, the, uh, I talked about this this morning. The unconscious vitriol against black women that's unconscious, but very ready. It's plump. It's very ready. Right now on uh, Netflix, uh, Meghan Marco and Harry. Ha have you guys seen it? It just so the first three episodes came out last week. The final three came out. I don't know if it's the final three, but three more came out. What was it yesterday or two days ago? And you see the level of vitriol against this woman specifically because she's mixed race. The vitriol. You go watch it. You're like, and what she is, is she is a case study. She's evidence. She, we get to see the level of vitriol that's hurled against a black woman that's ever associated with any kind of power, any kind of royalty, any kind of elevated state. See, life force energy that flows a free woman, a free woman, meaning like your whole pussy is unlocked. Ah! Your heart is unlocked. And you walk around like that, you are suspicious. You are suspicious. So the inevitable energetic bullets that will be, the, the misunderstandings, the, 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 the taking a few of your words and distorting them and pouring patriarchy and hatred and venom on them and then repurposing them to say, this is who she is. She's a manipulating con artist witch. This is why, one of the reasons why I birthed Arrogant Witch last year. Everything that they can call you, eat it. Everything that they can call you, which they're going to call you, own it. Take it, take it, take it. They have called me. And when you watch her and Harry tell you their side of the story, and you were actually looking at the tabloids 
from the US and the UK with the venomous stuff they were saying about her. And you realize the level of lies, manipulation. They intercepted the letter that she mailed to her father, specifically took out certain pieces, added other pieces and published illegally, published a whole fake letter in the paper to paint her a certain way. They would pay her neighbors money to put cameras on the neighbor's houses so they could spy into her windows. The level of lies, the level of vitriol, the level of manipulation they were engaged in to make her look like something she was not. All the books and articles that were written about her by people who don't even know her. They were, they were like, she doesn't have any friends. And you have all her friends on this Netflix special talking about how they were offered this, how they had to, they couldn't talk to her because the royal protocol was that she couldn't text friends. She, she couldn't send pictures. She couldn't get therapy because it would look bad that she actually was looking to kill herself. She talked to her mom. Her mom is interviewed in the Netflix special talking about how she came to her wanting to kill herself because the pain, the way she fake smiled in front of the camera to get along, like what really happened with her and Harry's relationship before it hit the public, the conversations that were happening. And Harry said today, and I'm going to say this and I'm not going to say anymore because I don't want to spoil it for those of you who are going to watch it. He was talking about he knew it was going to be some ugly because all his other girlfriends before Megan, the, the media would come after them too, right? Not with this level of ugly though. He said that the, 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 the royal family and the whatever they call the people who are like over the royal family because it's layers, right? They would be like, well, everybody else deals with media scrutiny. She needs to be able to deal with it too. That they would like say that without saying that. <clears throat> he said, yeah. And I get that there's some level of media scrutiny because we're the royal family. And he said, quote, but this is different. And they talked about the race element, darling there. And I talked about this this morning in visibility 2023. There is a specific distinct vitriol reserved for free black women. I have been so scared of that vitriol. It's over. Let's go. It's over. I contacted a former coach, maybe like before COVID, I know it was before COVID and I emailed her, no, I DM'd her on Facebook to work with her. And she said, why do you want to work with me? I had already worked with her with business coaching. She had helped me. Um, uh, anyway, she's a business coach. And she said, so why do you want to work together again? What do you want? I said, because I know that the kind of uh, negative work, uh, like feedback and things that she's gotten in her work. And I said, I want you to help me prepare to deal with public bullets. I told her this before COVID. I want you to help me to prepare to deal with public bullets. And I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wanted to be ready, but I wasn't ready. Now, I'm ready. I don't say this for the record. I know this may sound dramatic, but I just really want to say this for the record. Because, amen. Ashe. I'm so thankful and so much work and it takes such diligence. And when you are truly like since birth, since birth have been an electric on just like being in a body you're not trying to be an empowered woman because that's the trend of 2022. But since you were a child, you were this vast energetic. You were curious. You were playful. You were ambitious. My mom told me when I was like four, before I even started kindergarten, that I left the house and went up to the school because I wanted to see what all these other kids were doing going up to school before I was even qualified to go to school. And she came downstairs after getting herself ready for work one morning, I was gone and she found me up at the school. I had walked up to the school at four. <laughs> okay? So when you have been this woman your whole life and you put yourself in jail the way I have, 
than so many women have because all the voices from everybody, even from people who love you and they don't know that they're doing this, right? And then you find your way out of jail. Did you pay the price to be in jail first, though? You feel the burden and the heaviness of keeping yourself in jail, as I talked about here today, and I could talk more and more and more about in jail. And then you find your way out of jail the way I have and will continue anywhere I see, feel, sense. You find your way out of jail. And to stay out of jail. When the hit comes, when the misunderstanding comes, when somebody's shadow self wants to project onto you because it's taboo to be open and express, you're suspicious. What, what, what you're riddling? What you so happy about? What you so joyful and blissful about? It's a recession, bitch. What's she up to? Over there hugging people and shit. What? Man, I could tell you some stories of shit. Just living your life as a turned on woman. Shit you ain't even remotely thinking about. And motherfuckers come with some shit and you be like, that's what people thinking? And you like, I don't want people to think that. No. Staying out of jail when those hits come. And the significance for you or I, of staying out of jail, knowing everything you've gone through up till now, it is worth dying for. It is worth dying for. So if I die, keeping myself out of jail, it is worth it. That's for the record. Okay? It is worth dying for. You are powerful beyond measure, beyond measure. <sighs> it is not so dark that you scared of. It's your light. It's your light. How dare you be so alive? How dare you be so vibrant? How dare you be so exuberant? How dare you laugh loudly? How dare you be so on and permanently connected? You're powerful beyond measure. If you are ready to live that, for the rest of your mortal life. Be in touch with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all the demons, all the angels, all the heavens, and all the hells. <laughs> ah! Yes. Ah! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. <sighs>